Yeah, you too. How you holding up in these times? Um, not bad, man. Things are uh, definitely getting real over here. They just closed closed up all the bars, uh, restaurants, and uh, and gyms as of this morning over here for at least the next couple weeks. So, um, yeah, it's getting crazy. Hope uh, you and your people are all safe and healthy. Yeah, we're good. Um, yeah, I mean, this thing is, I think the next two weeks are going to be very telling to see what happens with this thing. Hopefully they can get it under control. We can go back to life as normal, but it's going to be, it's going to be fucking weird the next couple of weeks for sure, man. Definitely. Yeah, man. Crazy, crazy stuff. Well, yeah. Any, what, what, uh, what's up, man? I, I forget, I, remind me what you posted about. Um, I, I just frame kind of the whole thing and, and let's see, let me see how I can help you out today. Yeah, man. So, um, let me, uh, let me actually just share my screen real quick. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've got a, uh, a new pitch going on, um, for a production company, a film production company, uh, here in LA. Um, so basically it's, uh, it's this company, uh, Lunacy Productions. Um, traditionally they've been just that, a, a film production company, a lot of, uh, you know, big, uh, documentaries and films that they've produced recently, but uh, they're expanding into uh, the education online course uh, realm. So um, they're looking to produce, they produce a ton of content like every week, uh, at least they're, they're doing new articles, um, like pretty uh, decent quality articles. They haven't really had an SEO person. Um, so they're not like necessarily search optimized, but like, uh, the content is pretty strong, but, um, anyway, they're, they're making a online course for uh, film production, um, like kind of a, a video production boot camp that they're, uh, um, like some of the guys that, uh, that created this business are like educators already. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're thinking about creating a separate line of business. Um, that's an online course. So kind of like, uh, similar to what uh, to what you guys did at, at Webris actually so um, I mean one question they had for me was uh, you know should we do they, they're they're thinking Podia for hosting this yeah I, we, we love Podia um, it's cheap it's fast their support is great and it does a lot of the things that it does everything that we needed to do it's not I, I would say it's not quite as robust as like uh, I don't know I don't even know what the competitors are anymore because we've used for Podia for so long but they're, I would say podium. Cool. Awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, one question they had for me was like, uh, should they make this a standalone domain or should they attach it as a subdomain as mm -hmm. part of their, uh, their main site? I would say I would, well, it depends what their goals are, right? If their goals are to use this to generate. So like we, I'll just tell you our story. We separated the blueprint because we felt like it was big enough to stand on its own. Um, yeah. Meaning when I first launched it, it was kind of like we were building these tools, not necessarily to make money, but kind of as a promotion for the agency, you know, like here's a content audit, look at how great we are, blah, blah, blah. Then as we grew and expanded it, we realized it was its own standalone. But I, so I would say start on a subdomain, yeah. um, especially if the, the website has traffic, like Webris gets a lot of traffic. So we were able to drive a lot of initial sales through that subdomain. And then when it was time to launch our own domain, we just redirected that subdomain. So I would definitely start with the subdomain and keep it on brand because ultimately the training will feed whatever it is their, their normal, their normal businesses too. Cool. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's kind of what I recommended. Uh, what I worked out with them is that start on the subdomain yep. and then eventually as you grow potentially just, uh, you know, kind of spoke that off as, uh, as its own thing and redirect all the content. Um, but, uh, yeah, my other question for you was, uh, you know, th this is kind of a, um, a unique situation because uh, some of the deliverables apply. It's like, uh, because they're kind of branching into a subdomain, but when we're working with like a brand new website, yeah. um, it seems like most of the blueprint deliverables are, are kind of focused on existing sites. So like, you yeah. know, how would you recommend kind of doing this for a brand new, like in this situation and then for a brand new website for other scenarios yeah, question so are, are you building the website or is another agency building it um i'm not building the website i'm working with um their branding guy who um you know that's uh that's kind of on his team 
Okay. But I'm, I'm going to be working very closely with them. We're going to be handling the on page. Okay. So, so, so basically what I do in these situations is if we're not responsible for the, like for the design and the build, then we'll just focus on like the SEO touch points meaning, and you can just kind of write this under where it says month three report due, just kind of like while I'm talking, just so you have, um, all the way down, just like as a note. Um, yeah, just type it in there. I would say, um, like URL architecture. And the reason why I don't have these in, I thought about putting these in the blueprint, but, um, it's kind of hard to teach. It's one of those things where these are like, I, I don't want to put custom deliverables in the blueprint per se, because I make one video training it and then it, it just makes it more complicated. So URL like architecture, meaning what should the base, like the HTML layout of the site look like top level navigation, what pages are on that navigation? How do those pages, how many pages, what are the, um, like, what do the actual URL structures look like? Uh, like the whole thing, like basically just, I guess, wireframing a website, but from like an HTML point of view, if that makes sense. So I would do that as URL architecture. Um, and again, I don't know what the scope of this is. If you wanted to break this up into even like more deliverables and kind of long term, then you could also put um, like page template recommendations. So that would be like the on page. So I would actually do keyword research before that, but like um, page template recommendations, meaning like uh, we, ha we have some in the blueprint in the sales module. Um, just like grayscale wireframes, right? That you could literally do it on like a piece of paper if you wanted to, but something that you can pass to the designer to be like, these are the SEO requirements. So you could call that, um, you know, SEO requirements document, you could call it whatever. But again, the point is, what you want to do is you want to just be taking care of all the things that have SEO touch points um, during this process. So the things that are off the table that I can see are going to be and again, do if you're building on a subdomain, you might still want to do like a website quality audit. Uh, if you haven't already just to like kind of get a whole context for the website. Yeah. Um, but you don't need to do like the data studio analysis. Um, you know, like I would probably also throw in there a competitive analysis too, but more from a design and like UX point of view, meaning what are the top websites and like, what are they doing well? And a lot of that will be your opinion, stuff like that. So I would do that as a deliverable too. And you can bulk this all into one strategy document. Right. Um, so instead of the traditional competitive analysis, you can do that. Um, and then the on page would be like the page type of recommendations. You're still going to want to do keyword research. That's still a really point part of it. Right. Um, and then after that, I would say like, you'll probably want to do a content strategy for them as well. Like how does the content, are they going to create content on the subdomain? Maybe, maybe not, but that kind like the content strategy can tell them whether or not they should be doing that. You can also kind of dictate the difference between the audiences maybe because for us, um, you know, when we were launching this, it's a very different audience, right? It was the, our tools and trainings are for agencies, but our agency was selling to client facing accounts, right? So there was somewhat of a conflict of interest there. And it actually hurt us a little bit because even now to this day, people are like, Oh, you have an agency, right? Like, cause I've advertised so much for the blueprint. Like I didn't do a good job of, of organizing that up front. So I would make a content strategy that just kind of dictates this is what the main domain should talk about. This is what the subdomain should talk about. Assuming they have the capability to continue creating content. Yeah. Um, and then of course like a link acquisition plan. So you can see how this is kind of the same thing as a normal one, but just with a few different shifts. And it's just the fact that these pages aren't created yet. So like if we're looking at the normal project plan, right, it's like data analysis, website quality audit, and then improving instead, instead of improving what we're doing is we're planning, right? So we're, repla we're replacing that, um, like fact that we're looking at pages and we're just saying, okay, now that we can start from scratch, what should these pages look like? Um, and in regards to like the page templates, you don't want to design every single one of them. You want to do it by page template. So meaning, um, if we're looking at like a training website, you have the home page, right? And then you'd have like the training category pages where like maybe all the different trainings are going to be listed. You also have to figure out what I would put in there too, is probably like a tech scope recommendations. Like how does this interface with Podia, which is something that you're probably going to want to look into, right? Like, our, so the way that we do it on the blueprint is our website is on WordPress, right? But then when you click one of the checkout buttons, it then pulls through a Podia um, little pop-up modal, right? That's coming from a, a little piece of code that we got from the back of Podia. So we decided to build a WordPress marketing website and then at the point of conversion, push it to Podia, right? Um, so I'll probably put together like kind of a tech spec recommendation. Again, you'll just have to figure out how to break these things down after you kind of have the whole the whole scope of what you need to do. Uh, and then again, based on your agreement, it looks like you have like a three month, uh, three month agreement. You can figure out how to stagger these things. Um, 
because you, unless you want to just send them all in one document and bulk the pricing up front. But if you've already done this, I mean, this is more for the future is that if you get one of these campaigns, um, you know, just understand that a lot of this work, you could really do all this work in one big deliverable if you wanted to, right? And basically just pass that to their designer and developer and then be like, hey, we'll, you know, we'll work with, we'll give you five consulting sessions off the back of this to help get the, this implemented, right? So there's different ways you can structure it, but since you've already got it done this way, it looks like, I would just stagger these things out just based on the, when they need to get done. So like in terms of order, it's definitely gonna be uh, URL architecture, keyword research. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, like an under URL architecture, that would be like the top level navigation, but also it's kind of like a it, keyword research needs to inform that too. So they kind of be, need to be done at the same time, right? So they can be maybe done at the same time or what you can do too. And I know I'm just kind of fucking rambling here, sorry. Um, but is you can, you so like what we do, when we do a big strategy doc, we might do it over three month period, but we'll deliver it in installments, right? So the first part would be like, the technical architecture for month one, right? This is if we have a three month contract. Month two could be like keywords and content. And then month three could be like promotion and go live strategy, right? All in one document, but just staggered over time, right? Yeah. Um, so URL architecture, keyword research, top level navigation, URL structures, um, pay, wireframes for pages, that would be page templates, that's good. Um, and, and part of that would be, yes, it would be competitive analysis to get like, see what people are doing. Um, and then underneath that, I would also put like tech requirements. So, um, not just the design too, but how is this going to be built and how is this going to interface with search, um, under that too, under URL architecture too, I would just put like build sitemap. Um, you know, that's something that like, again, depending on the, sophistic the sophistication of the client, they might see that as like a very big value add. They're gonna be like, Oh, they're building a sitemap too. Um, when really it's easy. Right. Um, but just kind of like, I, so just, I would continue on your own time just to go through and kind of blow this all out. Just like thinking about all the things that need to go into this. I think this is enough to be honest with you, but you just kind of blow this out and then format this into more of a project plan. Um, like I probably wouldn't say that you need to do like keyword gap analysis here. Um, you know, schema I would put under the tech recommendations. Um, and then let me see. So I would also put content strategy underneath, uh, underneath wireframe. Like again, like how does, what, what is the difference between the content on the main site and this site? Is it a different audience? Is it different types of content? Um, you could do a keyword gap for that maybe, um, if you wanted to. Um, and then of course you're also going to want to put together some sort of like go live strategy that would have some element of like promotion, i.e. link building, maybe like forum promotions that you could like pass to them to take care of. Um, and then, yeah, just like making sure that like, you know, you just like, I always tell this to clients too, whenever you're rebuilding your website, like you need to make sure that even if we're not doing it, you need to make sure that we're informed because we want to make sure that the developer isn't like pushing the site live with no index tags or something like that. It happens, shit happens all the time. Um, so just make sure that I would have like, I would have like something for just like, like QA, um, in there before the, before the website goes live. Cool. Yeah. Um, that makes good sense. So like you would recommend kind of, uh, doing some of the upfront wireframing and planning, uh, before we launch this in addition to the deliverables I've, uh, I've mapped out here. Um, yeah. sounds like, so, um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, for, for this contract, it's going to be a little bit just based on their resources. It's going to be like a little bit lighter than my typical. Um, so like something that I thought was, uh, would be really important. They, I mean, they have a humongous library of content. So like a really in-depth content audit of like, yeah, you know, like you said, what, uh, what content should stay, what content mm -hmm. should be moved in the new domain and, and, uh, what should stay on the current domain. Um, yeah, gap analysis. And, and then like, this is actually a six month contract, but, uh, I only planned out the first three because after that it'll be just, uh, content topics, outlines and link building. Yep. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's kind of the, the plan from here, but, but yeah, that really helps. Um, and I think, yeah, I will recommend, uh, why, or at least like advising kind of like consulting on uh, their branding guide to, uh, to help him with the wires maybe. Yep. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Um, in the only other thing other than that was, uh, he kind of came back to me like, um, he's like, well, we don't want any like stacking any upsells like at the end of the contract like so we want to do like a three-month check and he's and, and he kind of asked me what's my opinion on should they be starting with these deliverables or should how much paid media what would i recommend they do to start up like as a 
and that's kind of a question I had for you too. Like, um, you know, what's your kind of pr perspective on, on that? Well, if, if he's adamant about the no upsells thing, then I would, I mean, is he aware of like how content and links are going to be pretty much ongoing instead of, so instead of my point with that is before you answer that is if he said, if he's not interested in like ongoing, then I would do a strategy work and not an execution work on that. Yeah. Cause that will also help to upsell it. So he sees all the work that's involved. So if you build him a content strategy, that's like, here's all the topics. Um, and then also like, here's a link building strategy. Like we have a standard deck that will just people who are like, Oh, we don't need link building, blah, blah. We'll just kind of stand and send that deck to be like, here's your current landscape. Here's what your top three competitors are doing. These are the gaps. Yeah. This is the type of links they're getting just so they can be like, all right, fuck it, man. You handle it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, he's sorry. He's already bought into uh, kind of uh, the implementation part of it. He said, I'm not interested in, in doing it myself. Like, you know, I want you guys to, to handle all of it. Cool. Um, his only thing was like, he wants to know up front, like, what is it going to take to make this thing succeed? Yeah. Uh, so he want, he, he's like, just give me all the costs that you're ever going to pitch me on now, you know? <laughs> like, cool. Yeah. So it's good, that, it's good that you're doing this then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, to you, so you're quite, I, I wouldn't put it, unless you're going to do the ads for them, then I wouldn't put that in. I would, again, put that in recommendations. Like basically what we'll do is anything, well, we don't do advertising, right? So it's out of scope for us. I know that, I think you do, right? Um, so I would definitely put that into the promotional strategy, right? I mean, like, and just kind of build it. Like everything is very easy the way that I do it. Like this is what I just said for our book in terms of owned, earned, and paid, right? Own being you know, promoting it to your own channels first to launch the website, launch the business, earn being like, Hey, can we do some outreach to, to customers, influencers, and then paid being the paid, paid recommendation. You can do that in like three slides just as recommendations. Um, again, just show them that you have a, that like, again, take this and do that. And again, it's just an easy way, even though he's telling you not to upsell. Um, yeah. if he's just paying you for SEO, be like, Hey, we did this on, out of our kind of our own best recommendations caveat. We can do this for you if you want. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, yeah, cool. I, you know, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned your situation and, um, you know, I interviewed, interviewed you a while back and you told me your story about how you launched, uh, the blueprint training and how you spent, um, a lot of, uh, upfront money, like without an expectation of ROI and then retargeted off the back of that, like when you were ready to launch the course. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so yeah, I told them that whole story. They liked it. Um, and, uh, I guess like, my, my kind of uh, thinking, my my pitch to them was we, we want to develop all of the best content we can. So we have lots of content to promote. We want to make sure that the, the site is buttoned up and that um, we have a content strategy. And then we can uh, worry about link building. And then, uh, you know, after that, doing the paid promotions. Is, is that kind of like... Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's the exact flow that we do. Like I said, whenever, whenever we launch, it's just owned, earned. It's just a very simple framework. That's like used by traditional media people and it works. You know, it's just a very organizational framework and it's a good way to kind of like scope things out and do it. So you don't rush things like with the book, I'm still on the own channels. We have two weeks of own promotions. Um, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to start turning my attention to people I know have, have bought in the book, ask them for reviews, ask them for social posts, um, and just like figuring out if I can maybe give people free books for, for, for publishing or I mean for, for promotion, blah, blah, blah. And then really turning it into, um, you know, just like kind of a scalable ad spend. So like the first owned is always like a two week, two to four week thing, depending on the size of your audience. And then earned is like another two to four weeks and then paid. It's just a very simple frame, framework that, you know, it, it works for, it works for any launch. Cool. Uh, very, very cool. That makes good sense. Yeah. That's kind of what I was what I told them was like, you know, light the spark of uh, owned and earned media before you uncork your, your paid media. So um, it sounds pretty in line with, uh, with, uh, with your wisdom. So that's good. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, um, I think that kind of does it for now. So uh, yeah, I think I'll move the, the content strategy piece a little bit earlier in the process here. And then, um, and then other than that, um, I'm going to add these, uh, elements of like, uh, planning and wireframing URL architecture, et cetera. Nice. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think that should be, that should be great. Awesome. All right, man. You got any more questions while you got me? Um, no, I think, uh, I think that's about it for now. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, really appreciate your time. 
And uh, awesome. thanks a lot for your help and, and everything uh, you guys are doing over there. Um, you know, I've given you so much praise already, but can't uh, can't give you enough praise for what uh, all the stuff you guys are doing for us. Awesome, man. We appreciate that. And uh, stay safe, man. Take care of your family. And um, we'll talk soon, brother.